Hey everybody, Robert with RC Archery. So most of us has heard the saying, aim small, miss small. I'd like to change that. Let's use miss small, win big. We have a decision to make. If there is no decision, we need to cut a deal today. You know what, that's the difference between us, Allison. You wanna lose small, I wanna win big. I wanna win big. In this episode of Archery Vision, I'm gonna be going over ways to tune your bow and also tune yourself in order to help you miss smaller when you make a mistake. This episode is gonna be a little bit different than the ones that I've done lately in the past. Instead of the video being three segments all into one video, I'm actually gonna elaborate on each section and I'm gonna turn this into three individual videos. This first one's gonna come out on Tuesday. I'm gonna have the second segment come out on Wednesday and the third segment come out on Thursday. The reason I'm doing this is I'm constantly evolving the channel and what I'm doing with my content. And I'm trying to make it the best for everybody watching to get the most out of it. One of the things that I've always hated whenever I've um, researched archery information or any information in general really is getting bits and pieces of the information and where it may be great information, it leaves something missing. So then everything doesn't come together. Maybe I have you know problems with it and struggle with it or I'm just left trying to figure out everything else out on my own. And that's something I really don't wanna do with this. I've been cramming three individual segments and three individual tips into a 15-ish minute video. And I'd really like to open this up and be able to elaborate more on each topic. That way I'm not leaving anything out for anyone. So going forward, what I'm gonna test out and what I'm gonna try is three videos every week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This is gonna be each segment broken down into one video, and that way I can have a five to 10 minute video or maybe a little bit longer if need be, and really deep dive into each little segment. Appreciate y'all watching, let's get started. So for this week's form breakdown segment, we're gonna be going over our grip. Our grip is our single connecting point between ourselves and the riser of the bow. And we look at a grip more like a steering wheel. The inputs that we put into the grip have a direct correlation with what we see downrange and where our arrows will impact. So that sounds important, right? Well, it is, but why do so many archers overlook it? So there are three factors when we look at developing the perfect grip. Number one, don't death grip the bow. So don't squeeze the bow really hard with our hands. Number two, don't cross the lifeline on our hand. And then number three, don't torque the bow. So even if you think you have a really good grip, you can let it slip one way or the other, and it'll actually input that torque directly into the bow. So when we talk about not death gripping the bow, it's actually really simple with the grip that I teach. So I teach you to curl your middle, your ring, and your pinky fingers into the palm of your hand. This does two things. One, it creates a natural pocket for the grip to want to sit into. That's going to help you not cross over the lifeline. It's also going to help you angle your hand in a way that's going to keep you at a 45-ish degree angle. So it's going to help you to keep from getting string slap on your arm. Now, the other benefactor of this is it's not going to allow you to torque the riser as bad. And if we change our bow hand from being soft to maybe having some tension in it, it's not going to input that tension directly into the riser as badly as some other grips will. Now I've made this diagram here for us to be able to see. This shows the lifeline, the good side of the hand to put the grip on, the bad side of the hand to put the grip on, and it really kind of gives us a visual as to what's going on. I've also marked out on the thumb pad side where that grip actually goes on my hand. Now, if you're old enough to remember the Ghostbusters line from the movie, don't cross the streams. That's one that I remember very well, and it really, you know, goes to be the same whenever we're looking at our grip we don't wanna cross that lifeline on our hand and get over to the bad side of our hand. Anything over there, it moves more, there's more input directly in, you know, put into the grip of our bow if we change the pressures in our hands or if we're moving our fingers or anything like that. So staying on the thumb pad side of the hand is the important thing that we wanna do. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is not putting torque into the grip. So you can see here, torquing the bow, whether we're tensing our hand up and we're directly applying more pressure on our thumb into the riser, or if we're relaxing the hand and letting it slip and maybe the knuckles come closer towards the target, either one of those are gonna have a direct effect on the torque that we apply to the bow. 
And that's why it makes it really important for us to find not only a comfortable, repeatable place for us to put our hand in the position of our wrist, but it also becomes very important for us to check this shot after shot, and then also later on tune to where we can keep this input from having as much of an effect on where our arrows land on target. All right, so I wanna take a moment and just thank you for watching this video today and remind you that segment number two over our tech tips is gonna be coming out tomorrow. So keep an eye out on this channel, tune back in tomorrow, turn my alerts on if you haven't already done that. That way you can get an alert through your phone, maybe through your smartphone or an email, and I'll let you know when I'm gonna post videos. I'm gonna start posting some more throughout the week so you have more content, whether it's gonna be tips or me just shooting or a weekly update just to let you know what I'm doing this week with my bow. Thanks for everybody for watching. I'll see you soon.